have in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All my sins and griefs to pay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know what's so good about Jesus? Is that once you hook up with him, you ain't got to go back to where you were. It's <laughs> always forward looking with Jesus. Hallelujah. How many of you are thankful for forward looking today? How many of you glad you can look forward with Jesus in your corner? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you that my past is over in you. All things are made new. Have brought 
what a mighty promise. Oh, my God. 
miracles. You're the God of signs. You're the God of wonders. Not only do we believe in your power, but we receive your power. So God, I thank you for the miracles and the signs and wonders. I thank you for manifestation in the lives of the people on this parking lot. Everybody in my hearing, God, we release signs and wonders and miracles up and down Plantation Road. All through the neighborhood, up and down the businesses, throughout this city, the valley, throughout this region. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Lord, we want to see your kingdom come. And we're just asking, can heaven visit earth? Because earth has issues. And earth needs a visitation for heaven. Lord, we welcome you here. We welcome you here. We welcome you, God, here. No man, no woman. We welcome you here, God. We need you, God. You're the God of miracles. The God of signs. The God of wonders. We believe. I believe in your power. I receive your power. And you're the God who makes all the difference. So we're going to stop putting our trust in the arm of the flesh. We're going to stop putting our trust in men. We're going to stop putting our trust in the ideas of men, which are limited. And God, we declare today, we are going to put our trust in you. The God of miracles. The God of signs and wonders. May heaven visit earth. Jesus, you taught us to pray, our Father, which art in heaven. Holy, yeah, you're holy, God. Some don't like that holy, but we like it. Come on, holy God. Come on down, holy God. Come on down, holy God. We welcome your holy God. We want your holy God. We welcome your holy God. Holy is your name. May your kingdom come, holy God. May your will be done, holy God. Not our will, your will. Not our way, your will. surrender it all to you. But I keep anything that's not like you needs to go. We surrender it all to you. Anything that's not like you needs to go. Not my will or my way. Your will, your way. Welcome, holy God. Welcome to Roanoke, Virginia. And Father, we thank you for Holy Spirit and your son, Jesus. Man, Jesus is the reason why we got communion today. Where would we be without the Lord? Jesus, we thank you for laying down your life a sacrifice for our sin. Just want to thank you today, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You said I'm going away. I'm sending another comfort of Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy. Welcome, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Welcome, Holy Spirit. You're the helper, the strengthener of the church, you're the muscle of God. We need that help. We welcome your precious Holy Spirit. I need your help, Holy Spirit. I welcome your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for covering, godly covering, and bless the, uh, the men of God who cover us. Um, Apostle Thompson, Dr. David Forbes, we just bless these great men and their families. Speak the goodness of God over they and their ministries. Use them greatly in their pulpits today. Uh, that the power of God will manifest among the people. Whether it be through some sort of social media medium, the power of God, the power of God, the power of God be released through social media, the power of God be released right here, present with the people. But Lord, we need the power of God. You're the God of miracles, signs, and wonders. We believe in your power. So bless these great men and the good people of their families and ministries. Thank you for everybody visiting today on the parking lot, our, the partners, the leaders, the visitors. We bless everyone under the sound of our voice. We bless everybody through Facebook, I believe, today. And God, God's presence visits you today, even through this live stream. This is what we pray, the presence of God. The presence of God, the presence of God visit you. Lord, where I'm weak, you're strong. We just believe you got a word for the people to edify and strengthen them. And Lord, just ignite their faith so they can receive these miracles, these signs and wonders, Lord God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. All the saints say, Amen. Give them praise and glory. Hallelujah. Listen in your car, you can turn your
your dial to 88.1 FM, or you can just keep the window open. That's up to y'all, okay? 88.1 all righty let's go let's begin today's it's a communion sunday children so we're partaking of re remembering what jesus did on that cross amen, amen. i want to go to isaiah 53 isaiah 53 isaiah 53 lord bless you keep me give you peace Isaiah. And let's talk a little bit about why Jesus came. And um, if y'all Christian, for the most part, you know, but every now and then we need to revisit. Well, look, I got a testimony. Because, because Jesus is the power of God, and what he accomplished on the cross is the power of God. The power of God. The power of God. And we, we talked about this. He's the God of miracles, signs and wonders. We believe in your power. We believe in your power. Uh, but there's, there, there was a power ignited when Jesus became a sacrifice for man. When he, when he laid down his life, he went to the cross. He suffered, bled, and died on the cross. He died on that cross. He gave up the ghost on that cross. Okay? And, and, and his suffering was not for his own sin. He suffered for our sin. He took the punishment we deserve. Okay? Sin has consequences. Man is born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That's sin nature we're born with. And then we do our own, I call it our own personal dirt. And that's our own personal sin. Jesus came to deal with both of it. He dealt with the, the sin state of man, the sin nature. He dealt with that on the cross. And he also dealt with what we do, the dirty deeds we think we get away with, which we don't. Okay? The byproduct of sin. The scripture says that the wage of sin is death. So that's what we get when we sow sin, we reap death. We sow sin, we reap death. It's the way it works, children. It's like payment. You go to work, you do a certain amount of time, you get paid. If you do sin, you get paid. But the payment for sin is death. Okay? Now, Jesus came to deal with that on mankind's behalf. And Jesus went to the cross to, to make a way for man to have a part of Um. He took the payment for the consequence of sin. Can y'all understand what I'm saying? Okay, so that's what the cross was all about. Now let's go to Isaiah 53 because Isaiah 53 gives us a picture of the powerful work of Jesus. So Isaiah 53 in King James Version said, Who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Talking about Jesus. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. So he wasn't always happy, happy, joy, joy, because Jesus had a very serious, sober, sobering assignment. Ultimately, Jesus was a miracle worker who ended up going to the cross for the, for the, for the sin of man. That's sobering work. That's ser serious work. It's sorrowful work, actually. And so he says, he is this, it's a joy on the other side of it, but the work itself is a lot of sorrow connected to it. Sin is, is sickening business, children. It's sickening. So he is despised and reject, rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and he was, and we, we all esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs. And that's, that's where we're getting into the fact of the sacrifice. What Jesus endured on the cross was not for himself. Nor was it a penalty for anything wrong he had done. Okay? 
What Jesus endured on the cross was for our sin. What Jesus endured on the cross was for our wrongdoings. Not just our sin state, but our bad behavior. Amen. Jesus went to the cross to deal with that. To, 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 to reap the consequence of our mess. Because, see, God is a holy, holy, you know, even Christians don't use that word enough. He's a holy God, and he's also a judge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when you when judge, the folk got to come before the judge. We're dealing with court. We're dealing with sentencing. We're dealing with crimes. Yeah, and you don't just ignore the crime. They say you do the crime, you do the time. And even if you think you got away with it, heaven saw it. Heaven sees it. All righty? And so God knows all the outward mess and all the inward mess. And Jesus came to deal with that for mankind. Now, not just take the punishment, children, but to, to make a way for man to change. All right, let's keep going. Not just take the punishment, but make a way for man to change. Yes, he is a way maker. He is a way maker. Now, surely he has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, verse 4, smitten of God. He was smitten of God and afflicted. God took out the punishment we deserve on his son. I'm going to say that again because he was smitten of God. God took out the punishment we deserve. He took it out on his son. Okay? I want y'all to understand that. Because the scripture says that Jesus was smitten of God. He wasn't smitten of the devil. He was smitten of God. Okay. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. That's why he went to the cross. That's why he suffered, bled, and died. He just died. You know how some people take that easy way out? Take a bullet, take a bullet to the head. Oh, that won't, this won't no slow death. This was a suffering that he endured. Okay, let's keep going. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. It won't just the cross. They beat him almost to death before the cross. Whipped him almost to death before the cross. But he couldn't kill him. He said, I'm the, I, I'm the one that got to lay down my life. And I ain't dying here at the whipping board. I got to go to that cross. He won't go die at the whipping board. Although the average man, the way they dealt it out to him at that whipping board, the average man would be dead. Yeah, yeah. In, a, in a, a pulpy, bloody pile of mess, the average man would have been long gone. Yeah. Jesus got up and walked away. Because that wasn't where he was, that was not where he was supposed to die. He was supposed to get to that cross. Oh, it's Communion Sunday. Let's just revisit it. Y'all think past is a pretty old Sunday morning, ain't it? Let's, let's get the whole reason why we're here. Amen. Oh, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is, he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people. He, he wasn't cut off out of the land of the living for his rotten stuff. He was cut off of the land of the living because of somebody else's rotten stuff. Ours. That he was taking the punishment for. This is why we Christians cry out, put your faith in Jesus. Even your good works ain't good enough because God knows the conjugations of your heart. God knows the thoughts that you have that are not right. And even those come under judgment, children. Jesus is dealing with it all 
died on the cross. In the law, in the law, I, I want to talk about all of it, the action and the intents of the heart. It all stinks in God's nostrils. So in the law, we get the commandment, thou should not commit adultery. I think all of us kind of know what that is. All right, Jesus, when he was dealing with his own brethren, the Jewish people, he said, you've heard it said, thou should not commit adultery, which we all know that's wrong. Most of us who got any kind of sense know that's wrong, okay? <laughs> any kind of morality, even if you got just that little bit. Even if you don't know God, but inside, inside you know, inside yourself, it's your cult, your conscience, you know that's wrong, okay? So Jesus said, you've heard it said, thou should not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that if a man looks on a woman, like he want to sleep with him. He has committed adultery in his heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is also what Jesus came to deal with. The thoughts, the cogitations, and the intentions of the mind. Just because you can keep a secret on the inside don't mean God don't see it, children. Jesus came to call us from the inside out. The inside out. The inside out. That means our thoughts, our motives. He came to deal with all of it. And the church said, yeah. give a praise to the Lord. All right, he's a big Jesus, and when we come to him, he does a thorough cleaning. Let me say that again. <laughs> because he's a big Jesus. It's, it's not us, it's not our strength, it's not our might, it's not even our will. You know, I got a strong will. No, it ain't, got that, it ain't that strong. Okay, we need the power of God to come visit us. Because the damage in mankind is not just outward, it starts on the inside. So Jesus came to do an inside, outside job. Let's, uh, I'm going to come back up to six in a minute. Verse eight, he was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall deliver his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. In other words, it wasn't his fault, it was their fault. But he took the blame. Yeah, yeah. Nine. And he made his grave with the wicked. And with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence. Not Jesus. Neither was there any deceit in his mouth. So he won't no lying person. He won't no du uh, double tongue person. Okay, he was Jesus won't no con artist. He won't shady. We keep going. Now, verse ten. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. What? They just said he was spitting of God. He won't spitting of the devil. He was spitting by his father. His father was trying to transfer the punishment that mankind deserved right. to his son to give mankind a pardon. Yeah. That's called grace, children. Yes. Right. Undeserved and unearned favor. Yeah. But, but, but God is a judge. Yeah. So he's got to deal with the criminality of man. Yeah. Well, he took, out, he took out the punishment of the criminality that man deserves. He took it out on his clean, unrighteous son who willingly laid down his life as a sacrifice for our sin. Thank you. We'll keep going. Why did he do that? Verse 9. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he'd done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has, he has put him to grief. When thou shalt see his soul and offering for sin. Uh -huh. Jesus is the offering. Amen. Jesus was a sacrifice for mankind's sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Let's look at that and amplify it. Verse 10. Yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him, the will of God to bruise the son, the father to bruise the son. He has put him to grief and made him sick. When you and he make he his life an offering for sin 
and he was, has risen from the dead in time to come. He shall see his spiritual offspring. Didn't I tell you God's creating a whole new race? Y'all hung up on the black and the white. We really need to get above that. Because God is creating a whole new offspring. We keep going. Yet it, it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief and made him sick. When you and he made his life an offering for sin, and he has risen from the dead in time to come, he shall see his spiritual offspring. He shall prolong his days, and the will and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. 11. Amplified. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul. So everything that Jesus endured on that cross over 2,000 years ago, he was doing it for a reason. Before he went away, he told his disciples, unless the seed go into the ground and die, it cannot bring forth fruit. Jesus saw you coming over 2,000 years ago. I said, Jesus saw you coming over 2,000 years ago. Because you are the fruit of his death, burial, and resurrection. One day, you put your faith in Jesus. And when you did, you became his offspring. We sprang off of him. That's why we use the term Christian. Because we want to be like Christ. I'm walking slow today. <laughs> got on real comfortable shoes. We got communion today. I'm going to pace myself. How about that? <laughs> Hallelujah. In Amplified, verse 11, he shall see the fruit, which is, these are men and women who come to put their faith in Jesus, okay? He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul, and he will be satisfied. Jesus looks at you, he's real sad, says, oh man, oh man, you were worth it. You were worth it. You were worth it. You were worth it. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied by his, his knowledge of himself, which he possesses and he imparts to us. We need knowledge of him. He imparts knowledge of him, of him, not you children. We've had enough of you. We had enough of you before you found Jesus. So you're supposed to die, okay? And let Christ rise up in you. I know I've had enough of me. I need Jesus to rise up big in me. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. Verse 11. By his knowledge of himself, which he possesses and imparts to others, he possesses and he imparts it to others, shall my uncompromised Uncompro uncompromisingly righteous one, my servant listen to this children because this is a legal term he will justify many now I've been, I've been reading a lot of scriptures about the sacrifice and the offering and Jesus being the sacrifice and it never says that he, he never uses the term all it uses the term many you know why? because all won't come because man has free will. Yeah, yeah. Because man has choice. And even, and of course we pray God pulls the blinders off of men's eyes. But sometimes when you share this good news of Jesus to people, their hearts are so hard, so stubborn. Even in the midst of miracle signs and wonders and God's glory being revealed, the heart can be so hard, yeah. so stubborn, it still defies God. You say, well, pastor, didn't Jesus die for everybody? It says he died for many. I'll give you an example. And, the, and it's not that all can't come. It's because we have free will. He's not going to force himself on you. And you get the picture of this on the cross when he's between two thieves. Two guilty men. They both did the crime and deserved the punishment. So one recognizes he has a conscience. Some men don't. Some men are missing that. So one man recognizes I've done wrong. They, they hear all of the people screaming at Jesus, if you're so wonderful, get yourself off the cross. If you're supposed to do this. These are all of the people throwing them up there. They're, they're mocking him. 
And so the two thieves hear all the mocking and they're like, what's up with all this, right? And so initially they both were like, well, who are you? You know, kind of thing. But, but, but the one on, oh, the, the evil one, the one whose heart refused to change, the unrepentant, uh -huh. he says to Jesus, if you really are, you know, who they say you are, this son of God, this king, get yourself and us off of here. So notice. There's no recognition for my wrongdoing for even being here in the first place. Right. I'm trying to get a shortcut out of here. Right. And so you help me. If you're so great, you help me. Now that was his attitude. But on the other side of him was another criminal uh -huh. with a conscience. Uh -huh. mm. So this criminal with a conscience actually chastises the criminal with no conscience, no desire to repent, no taking responsibility. For his own wrongdoings. No, he's just trying to get off. Okay. The other criminal has a conscience. The ability to repent. The ability to self-reflect. Self-reflect and say, you know what? I did wrong. I'm wrong. Oh, good for you for having that much self-reflection. To recognize your error. And this is what this man did. He says, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. This man is a good man. We... The one with the conscience said, we deserve to be here because of our crimes, because of our actions. That's called taking responsibility, children. That's not blaming on mama, daddy, sister, brother, auntie, and teacher of the third grade. Teacher of the third grade didn't commit the crime you up on the cross for. You did that. So, he says, we deserve to be here because of our crimes. So he recognized his wrong. There was also a bit of sorrow, a bit of yeah. remorse yeah. for his actions. Yeah. And he said, but Jesus, when, if, when you come into your kingdom, yeah. Yeah. even though I, I deserve to be here, I, I did the crime, I deserve this, but, but which, which, when you come into your kingdom, will you remember me? Yeah. 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 Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Do you see how easy repentance can be? It's a change of heart that begins with saying, you know what? I'm wrong. Let go of your pride. Your stubborn hearts. Let it go. Stop making excuses for sin. As you make excuses for sin, you can't come out of it. As long as you make excuses for sin, you won't even have an ability to turn around. And repentance is a change of mind and a change of direction. This man on the cross, he's about to die. But you get two, you get two mindsets in death. One that's blaming God and folk all the way out. One that never takes responsibility of wrong. And then there's the other that says, oh. I am wrong. I'm wrong. I deserve this. But then there's a, a sorrow for it. You know? And then there's, then he turned to Jesus, the only person who can extend grace to someone. But the other man who said, if you're really the Christ, get us off. And you, let me tell you, children, he didn't go to paradise. He bust hell wide open. Because of his defiance, he would not repent. He would not own his mess. He would not take responsibility for his actions and said, you know what? I'm wrong. I, 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 I was blind. And now I see. Oh, no, I'm blind and I'm going to stay blind. Well, that's why when we run across these scriptures, he died for many and not all. It's because everybody ain't going to receive it. Y'all get it? We from Chesapeake here, y'all. I don't know when God going to tone her down, but right now she's flying high, okay? All right. And I'm talking about the Christ in me. I ain't talking about Barbara. Verse 11. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied by his knowledge and his, himself, which he possesses and imparts, Christ imparts himself to others. That's such good news. Shall my uncompromisingly righteous one, my servant, justify many, not all. 
Y'all see it? He'll justify many. He'll justify many and make many righteous. It's sad because all won't be made righteous because they have their own free will like the other thief on the cross. Justify many, make many righteous, upright, and in right standing with God. For he shall bear their iniquities, the ones who come to him. He bears their iniquities. And their guilt, I'm so glad he does that. I'm, I'm so grateful he does that. With the consequences, now let me say that again. My servant will justify many and make many righteous, upright, and in right standing with God. For he shall bear their iniquities. He shall bear their guilt with the consequences, says the Lord. With the consequences. With the consequences. Look, the two men on the cross, the one who wouldn't own up to his mess, the one who played the blame game and wanted to blame everybody but themselves for their sorry, low-down actions, the one who, whose heart was so hard that all he wanted to do was get off. And let me get out. Let me weasel like, like a snake instead of owning his stuff, taking the personal responsibility and then feeling the sorrow for sin and saying, Will you, can you help me? Yeah, yeah. That took humility. Yeah. All right, so the one who, who, who had no conscience and made excuses for sin and was trying to get out of the consequence ended up in a burning hell. Jesus didn't even talk to the guy who would not take responsibility for his actions. Right, right. But to the guy who said, oh, uh, I'm wrong. I actually deserve this. I deserve it. But Jesus, when you get to your kingdom, would you remember me? Jesus told that man, you will be with me huh? in paradise. But he didn't tell the other thief that because the other thief had no remorse for sin, would not take responsibility for his actions, and would not receive Jesus as Savior. But more fuss them. <laughs> fuss them. If you really got so much power, get us off. These are the two hearts of mankind. And you have to decide who you are. I pray the Holy Spirit visit your heart, bring you under deep conviction and sorrow for sin. Because until we get to the place where we come under conviction for sin, and I'm not talking about passing the book, I wouldn't be this way if boom, 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 no. I'm talking about taking responsibility for my actions and Lord, I am sorry because I did it. Now you finally awake. You're awake. Jesus can do something with you now. All right, give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Therefore, he says, will I divide him a portion of the great kings and rulers, and he shall divide the spoil with the mighty, because he poured out his life. Oh, he deserves it. He deserved the glory, children, because he poured out his life. He poured out his life unto death, and he let himself, he let himself be regarded as a criminal. Now, he won't a criminal, but he let himself be regarded as a criminal. He poured out his life unto death, and he let himself be regarded as a criminal and be numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore and took away the sins of, say the word, the sins of many, not all. I'm seeing that a lot. I've been noticing that a lot. He took the sins of many, not all, because all ain't going to accept him. Yet he bore and took away the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. He made intercession for the rebellious. I'm going to, I think I've been, I've been here long enough. I want to close. I want to go right back up to verse um, 6 and close it before we partake of communion because this is very precious uh, for us to be mindful of. Verse 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. All we. So if you were born 
to a, a, a godly mother, uh, maybe a Christian mother, or if you were born to a not, I mean, somebody who's really out there. Still, all we have gone astray. You might have been raised in a, in a good household or, ugh, you know, you want to forget the memory of it, of it, okay? Either one, we all go astray. We all choose our own way. And this is why Jesus came. No matter whose family you were born in, no matter what color code you come under, all right, whatever your background, your nation, where all mankind is born in sin. Yes. All mankind needs a savior. Yes, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've all gone our own way. It's why we all need the savior. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? So, one day we heard the gospel preach and we recognized, first of all, that we were sinners. And then we recognized that, oh my goodness, that Jesus person, he can save me? That Jesus person. He can deal with this condition in me? That Jesus person. He can deal with my bad behavior, my bad actions. That, can that Jesus really help me? It says here, he imparts himself into them. Oh, that's what I need. I need him to impart himself into me. Impart himself in. Because when I try, you know, I be trying sometimes. You know, I, I really be trying to do the right thing. And, and then I mess up. But but can this Jesus, can he change me? Will this Jesus impart himself into me? Ladies and gentlemen, you need some different DNA than your mom and daddy. And God bless your mom and daddy, really. Because they got you on the planet. But we're still all born in sin and shaking yeah. iniquity. We need new DNA. <laughs> Jesus has come to give us new DNA. Remember, we're talking about spiritual offspring. Springing off from Jesus. Well, how can I spring off from Jesus? By putting my trust in him. Recognizing first that I'm a sinner. Like that, 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 that thief with a conscience did. He said, oh man, I'm wrong. I deserve to be here. I really do. He won't like a thief with no conscience. That wouldn't even recognize his own sorry low down actions that brought him to death. Oh no, oh no. Oh man, he ain't even gonna think about that. Uh, if you're supposed to be so great, you need to get us off. You need to get us off. You see the weasel in him? Oh, it's a weasel there. But the other guy, he done wrong, but his conscience bothered him, children. He, 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 he could take responsibility for his actions. He won't always try to thrust off his sorry behavior on somebody else. No, no, no. He manned up. And he said, you know what? I did it. And I ain't proud of it. I regret it. Can you help me? Are you really who they say you are? Can you help me? To entice some men on this planet, children, those who repent and those who don't. Okay. We're praying that the Holy Spirit will visit yeah. and bring true conviction to the hearts of men. Because Jesus came not so we could keep on sinning, He came to change His children. We've got to turn from sin. We've got to say, I don't want the sin life no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I regret the sin life. But I can't really, I don't have a strength to overcome it. Jesus said, that's what I come in. Just invite me in. Invite me in. Invite me in. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We all need Jesus. I ain't hung up on color. I don't care what color you are. Every color is jacked up. Do you hear me? Every color needs Jesus. Do you hear me? I ain't hung up on no gender thing. Male and female need Jesus, children. We all need the Savior. Let's give a prayer. So, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you for Isaiah 53 and the power of the cross. Because what Jesus accomplished on the cross through that that, that difficult work, that, that, that torturous work that he went through on the cross, he really came to set us free from sin's power. But we must put our faith and our trust in him. 
And today we say, Lord, we don't want the sin life. Oh, no, no, no. We don't want that. That offends you. And it ain't doing nothing but killing us. No, no, no. But we can't, we can't get ourselves out of it. So that preacher said that we need a Savior, that you, Jesus, will help us. Help me, Jesus. Now pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Christ, Son of the living God. I believe with all my heart you died for my sin, not my mama or my daddy. I'm not blaming nobody else for what I do. You died for my sin. Wash me, Jesus. Wash me, Jesus. Wash me, Jesus. Make me clean. Make me clean by your precious blood. I believe you died. Went into the grave. Got up three days later with all power in your hand. I call you Lord and Master and the ruler over me. I give you my spirit, my soul. I give you my body. I give you everything. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Fill me up, Lord. I need more of you and less of me. Just fill me up, Lord. Take all of me. How about that? Just fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up, Lord. Now, Jesus came to save us, and also the helpers, the Holy Spirit, came to baptize us in the Holy Ghost and with fire. So pray this. Lord Jesus, baptize me with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The fire of the Holy Spirit just flush through this, this territory, flush through. The fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost penetrate through this live stream. The supernatural God visit the people, visit the people, visit the people. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you pray that sinner's prayer, that's what I call that, the salvation prayer. If you pray that, it's very important that you find a Bible-believing church. A Bible-believing church. Okay, I'm a, I really do have to qualify that. And then also, you got to read the Bible for yourself. Okay? You got to open it up. God speaks to us through the scriptures. I came from the scriptures today. God's going to talk to you through the scriptures. Now, I bless you. I'm praying for you because you're a baby now. The Lord wants you to grow up, grow up in Him. You can't grow up without no word, no Bible. It's hard to grow up if you're not around other people who believe in Jesus like you, okay? So that's why you want to find, ask God, just say, Lord, just show me where I need to be. Show me where I need to be. Settle me down. Settle me down, okay? All right, so the Lord bless you. May the Holy Spirit really direct you to the right body of believers, the right pastor, um, the right voice um, uh, for you. In Christ Jesus. All right. And that's my prayer for you, okay? That's my prayer. All right. Now, we're preparing to have communion. So, I think all of you have your communion cups. Uh, raise your hand if you don't, and they'll, they'll get a cup to you.
Corinthians 11. Oh, we got, anybody raise, I got a hand up. In the back, straight back. of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed that was a tough night he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death. Now, powerful things happen at his death. Our sin was dealt with at his death. It's a powerful thing. For as often as you eat and drink uh, this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Let a man examine himself. For he that eats and drinks unworthily, eats and drinks damnation, the scripture says, to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For if we judge ourselves. I'm, I'm going to harp on, let a man examine himself and judge ourselves. Okay? All right. It means take inventory. It means you have the ability to look inside and know your error and say, oh goodness, I'm wrong here. That's what we're talking about. So many people can't do that. Oh, I'm not wrong. It's that person's fault. And I'm not going off on a tangent. I'm trying to shake a mind suit set, set loose that's really prevalent in this generation. The blame, the blame generation. Enough of it. It's time for us to take responsibility for our own actions. It's why a man must examine his own self and a man should judge his own self. All right. For if we should judge us, if we would, if, if we do it, if we take the time to actually self-reflect and judge ourselves, the scripture says we should not be judged. But when we are judged, it means we ain't take the time to self-reflect and judge ourselves. But when we are judged, so now we go to the second layer. When we don't take the time to self-reflect, to say, you know what, oh God, I'm so wrong now. I apologize for that. I, I, I don't want to hurt your heart. I don't want to hurt this person's heart. I don't want to hurt that person. I'm really sorry about that. That's self-reflection. That's, that's taking inventory. That's examining myself. That's judging myself. Now, if I don't do that, something happens. 31, for if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, and this is the next layer, we are chastened of the Lord. Sometimes stuff be happening to folk, and it's a consequence for their bad behavior. The first thing these folk want to do is cuss God. But it's a result of their behavior. They didn't take the time to judge themselves. They just run roughshod over people like they don't even exist and forget God. I ain't even thinking about how he feels about the situation. When I take you to the tour, I say, Lord, I don't want to hurt your heart. I don't want to hurt your heart. And then I, and, 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 and if, sometimes he'll make me aware, well, you know, you could have done better with this person or that. When I say, okay, Lord, all righty, I'm sorry about that. And uh, if I have to do something to help amend the person, I will. You understand? Even if it's just praying for the person. But that's called self-reflection. It's called examining myself. How, you can't call yourself Christian, really, if you can't take time to look inside and say, okay, show me me, Lord, and help me with me. And if I've erred, Lord, you know, if there's any wicked way in me, 
Because I don't want that. I, just, I want what you want. Self-reflection. Self-examination. Judging yourself. If when you look to judge yourself, all you can do is point your finger out at somebody else, you're missing it. Let me tell you something. You take time to judge yourself and somebody else come to your mind, maybe they hurt you, you say, oh Lord, I forgive them. I release that debt. I forgive them that. I'm going to release that debt. Because see, Jesus forgave all your debts. Forgave all mine too. So if you, can't, you can't even take time to self-reflect because you're too busy pointing your finger out at somebody else. Then here we go in your self-reflection mode. But all you do is point out somewhere else. What does this now? That's just to forgiveness mode. Okay, Lord, you know what they did, but I release them. I'm going to give them to you. I release this person. I let it go. I forgive that debt. And I give them to you. I release this person. And then maybe after you do all your forgiving, you can actually self-reflect. Y'all, the pastor's in the house today. We got to clean it up, okay? People be thinking crazy. I'm about to clean that all up, okay? Now, he says, 34, this cause many are weak and sickly. He says, for if you judge yourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, that means we didn't take the time to judge ourselves. We'll get chastened of the Lord. That's right. That means things will start going wrong in our life. And we'll say, well, I don't know what's going on. And I'm going to tell you what's going on. You're being chastened of the Lord because you didn't take the time to judge your own self. He didn't even want to judge you. He wanted you to take the time to fix it yourself. You know what, honey? Come on here because there's some stuff off here now. Come on. But when you are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. Listen to how serious this gets. But when we are judged, we're being chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Now look at that. So everything didn't go right. I wonder what the problem is. The problem is because you disobeyed God. Did God try to get you? You just forget. I, I'm ignoring God. So now that you're ignoring God, you don't self-reflect. You don't deal with you. Then God comes in and he starts dealing with you. And the reason why he will deal with you and everything won't be going your way is because he wants you to wake up. Because you're getting close to being condemned with the world, children. And because he loves you, he chastens you. That's called a good father. All right. We about to partake. Amen? Amen. All right. Now listen, this is the meal that heals children. I do some pastor parenting today. I'm going to shake these mind, these, mind, these crazy mindsets up. Did everybody wrong with you? I'm going to tear that thing up. I'm about to tear that. I'm about to tear that up. You hear me? <laughs> Everybody wrong with me. Uh, you a liar. And you, you lying to your own self is what you're doing. You know, we'll read. I you Just pray a little bit. It's time for self-examination. We just want to please you, God. Freely we were forgiven. Freely we forgive. We let go of any sort of wrongdoing anyone's done to us. We're going to actually give that person who hurt us to you, God, and let you deal with them. How about that? We release, we release them to you. Thank you for your healing presence and power that heals the wounds in our heart. Heal us, God. Isaiah 53 says the chastisement of our peace, that soul and mental and emotional wellness, is upon you. And by your stripes, Lord Jesus, we are healed. That's our spirit, our soul, and our physical bodies. The meal that heals. The meal that heals. It's bigger than Corona. The meal that heals. The meal that is bigger than mental illness. The meal that heals. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let us eat together. Receive your healing as you eat. Receive it by faith. The meal that heals. Receive it by faith. Receive your healing. Your mental wellness. Some of y'all need, need, need healing in the mind. Jesus died for that. Chastisement of our peace. Yes, God. Wellness in the mind. And even emotional wellness, we pray. We receive that through his body broken and his blood shed. Amen. What can wash away our sin? Hey, 
and by the blood of Jesus. Let's drink together. We thank God our sins are washed away. Amen? You can prepare an offering as they sing. that you breathe upon the remainder 
but ultimately it all belongs to you. And we, keep it. And we know that, Lord. The earth is yours, the cattle of a thousand years are yours, the hills are yours, the gold and the silver, it all belongs to you. We get it temporary on loan, and we want to be good stewards of it, Lord. And keep that up, us even. So we're going to bless you with a portion of it back. And we thank you for that blessing upon the remainder. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all repeat after me. Great people are ready to help us in the right way, at the right time. People who don't even know it yet. We promise we will never give up when it looks like we don't have the help that we need. But we will trust God to provide. Let me say that again. I will trust God to provide. I will trust God to provide. See, that's again, that's the releasing of your faith, okay? God has resources that we have not even considered. But in the right way, at the right time, God will provide. All right. Abundance. The Lord bless thee. And if you're out your car, raise your hands up. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance 
upon thee and give thee peace. Have a beautiful week this week. I bless you all. Amen. <laughs>